Hello, everybody. Yes, sir. Hello. Here we Hello. are. Say it. Go. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it as well as you. I don't uh, have practice. Well, that was Hello, pretty good. Hello, everybody. Hello. Yeah, you got to really just... Gotta get the, oh. you, you say it like you're falling off a cliff. Hello, <laughs> everybody. You know, it's like a wily e. coyote going down the thing. I like it. So, I'm here with Bunny Wild. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> We're writers. <laughs> We're we're so fucking articulate. We we could do all this shit. What is happening? Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. So, bunny. Yes. Here we are. We're and here. How Here, let me let me ask you some riveting questions here. Okay. So, you're originally from America. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, originally I'm from Michigan, um, in a very small town in Michigan, about maybe an hour away from Detroit. And um, about seven years ago, I moved to Germany. And um, I've been here ever, ever since, and I've not been back to the U.S. since then. Have you been in the same area in Germany the whole time? Uh, we've moved from small town to small town, but yes... Um, basically in the same area. What's your favorite part about Germany? Surprisingly, not the beer, although it is delicious. Um, it's just a beautiful country, and it's a, it's a great place to be and to explore, and I really enjoy it here. Is it, like, where you're at? I don't, I'm not really familiar with a lot of it, so is it, like... Um, like when you see like little villages, like where it's like a little village and then a lot of nature, like right behind it kind of thing, or is it like village, 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 village? Well, where I am right now, it's more like a small town with like a historical center, you know, with that kind of um, old architecture and it's really beautiful and interesting. Um, where we used to live was actually a small town, a small village um, with a with a castle. So that was interesting. Um, nice. Very beautiful. Yeah. But yes, it's just a village, village type thing here. How did you get into writing? Well, writing, um, I actually started last year, I believe in June with the wonderful, amazing Poetic Anarchy class. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> um, taught by Matt Wall. Oh. And I don't, I don't know if you know him, but yeah. he's a great guy, you know? I, I, I've, heard, um, I've heard differing things, but that's okay. <laughs> so you never did anything before that? Like, you never had an inkling? You didn't mess around with anything? You weren't doing anything creative before that? Well, I did as a small child. Um, I was always creating stories and drawing, and I was into creative things during that time, but at some point, um, it just went away, and I, I hadn't dabbled in any kind of writing until, until last year. Do you remember a lot of the stuff you used to write and create when you were little? Yeah, I um, I wrote a lot of spooky stuff, I remember. I entered a contest one time for a magazine, writing a short horror story for children. And yeah, a lot of things like that. I've always been interested in horror and, and that whole genre. Yeah. See, that's awesome. But I think like, a lot of kids are. What's that? I think a lot of kids are, though. That's kind of the thing, right? Yeah. Because I think um, when we're young, the idea of working out our fears 
through like stories and what if this happens and what if that happens like that's how we put together what the fuck we're thinking about and how we do shit and I don't know what happens there is an age and I don't know if it's like a numerical age or something that happens to somebody <clears throat> that takes that whole like writing through your shit away from you and that's Ooh. always like boggled my mind I've always wondered about that but you did a, a weird mask race didn't you oh yeah 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 um, I stumbled on booktube and I don't remember how but then I found your channel and uh, I had been watching for a while and you had the weird mask 500 and I thought it looked kind of fun and I decided to write a short story um, called Zipper. How did you like yeah, that? And then you how, how did you like the whole, like, super timed deadline kind of thing? I think at that point it was okay because it was only 500 words. And mm. that seemed like a good idea for me to do because I hadn't had any ideas about writing before that. Let, let's get to the, the meat of the matter here. You wrote the Potato Manifesto. Now, this whole thing, whenever I talk about it to people, they crack up. They're, like, so intrigued by it because it just sounds so, like, kind of bizarre, I guess. So, how did this happen? Well, I was having a conversation with someone, um, and we were talking about silly hats and, you know, just ridiculous random things. And somehow it came about that I should write a manifesto. And I had not slept in far too long. And my brain was kind of marinated in energy drinks. And for the manifesto, all I could think about was potatoes. And so I decided to write like a call to action to potatoes everywhere to rise up and, and make war against the world. And so I guess it was just kind of a silly thing that kind of became later um, a challenge and actually really emotional. Um, that sounds stupid, but it's true. <laughs> now, were, were you hungry when you came up with <laughs> potatoes? Like, was that like, were you just wanting some chips or something? I'm often hungry, especially for potatoes. Yeah, your potatoes are good. God damn. <laughs> okay, so what exactly about this be became emotional for you? Well, it's just, um, it came from the assignment in class, in the Poetic Anarchy class, um, we were meant to do something we'd never done before, something crazy, you know, live life. And I thought, because I had this ridiculous thing that I wrote, um, because of my social anxiety, I thought the craziest thing I could do was go to a stranger and try to explain um, what it was and, and see what happened from there. So how did that go? Um... <laughs> It, it was, um, it was crazy. The whole thing was really crazy. And I remember being so nervous and, and having all of this going on inside me while trying to explain something so silly. Um, yeah, so it was and, kind of a mess. And you're explaining this in German, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. Which I don't speak very well. It's kind of embarrassing because I've been here for almost a fucking decade. But <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, that yeah, that's so good that's though. Okay, so you go up to people and you start telling them this. How was it received? Well, at first, um, people are very confused. And maybe a little concerned. There were some people who would not speak to me at all. <laughs> and I don't blame them because I probably looked. 
like a fucking wreck. Um, but yeah, so I did find someone who allowed me to uh, read the manifesto and um, yeah, she was friendly afterwards despite all the confusion and that was nice. So that did, was really helpful. Did you have it like written out in German yeah. when you were like reading the German? Yeah, I did. And that was, um, that didn't help at all. <laughs> there are um, six poems in here with the exception of the actual like call to arms or whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. So can you kind of go through and talk about what each of the poems are about? Okay. The first one is sad potato. <laughs> and that one is a lot about, um, you know, my, my doubts about writing and writing something so silly um, and how maybe I, I can't deliver. I just thought it was some stupid shit and that nobody would really get where I was going with any of it. Did you know where you were going with it? Yeah, I just, I really wanted to go through the experience and I wanted to show how it made me feel for the assignment um, in the class. I really wanted to write about, you know, how how emotional it was for me and and that maybe I could come out with something really good, you know? So in the sad potato, are you the potato? Yes. Okay. I am the potato. <laughs> I'm forever the potato. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shit. Um, like, for those of you who can't see this, the look on Bunny's face there when she said she is the potato, forever the potato. That, that, was, that was some shit right there. Okay, and so now the second poem here is a German title. Can you yes. pronounce it and say what this means here? Auf Deutsch, bitte. Um, in German, please. Ah. And this is... Yeah, and this is kind of about uh, a situation I had where I could not pronounce a certain word. Mm -hmm. And there was um, a big blow up about that. So I wrote it and I put it in my manifesto. So with everything that's in here and doing this whole experiment um, for the class and everything, what did you learn mm -hmm. out of this? I learned that I could do something even though it was ridiculous and silly, I could find a way to make it work for myself. Like, even though I was scared um, and terrified, like I am now, <laughs> that it could be something really rewarding. And I was really appreciative of that. So I'm glad that you did that for the, for the class. I'm really happy about it. Good, good, good. As far as you're concerned, like, what is the difference between, like, putting out, um, like, an ebook of Monsters in the Mouth compared to doing, like, a chapbook of this? I think the difference is it's something, not that an ebook is less personal, but I really like the, um, the handmade, you know, aspect of it being my first adventure into physical media, you know, and opening doors to future projects, you know, where I could maybe have like a, a whole book of my work. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. I think ebooks are great, but there's something about, for me, just holding something in your hand. And I don't know, I'm a really tactile person, so, and it, it feels a bit more special to me. It, it is weird because like I I have had print books made and stuff and even like print books of my poetry but for some reason um, like the chat books have like a different feel and yeah. I'm wondering if it's the material inside of it because eventually um, as my chat books go out of print, I'm going to be putting them out in paperback books, like as collections and shit. 
But I don't know how I'm going to feel about that. Like, I don't know if it's going to have the same charm, I guess. Yeah. There, there's yeah, something really one. charming about, like, yeah. self-made stuff. Yeah, and the whole history with chapbooks is really interesting as well. Yeah. So that, you know, that kind of adds to it, I think. So did you want to read anything from this? Oh, sure. I can do that. Um, let me see. Page eight. Okay, so I have one um, called Stuck on Stupid. Mm-hmm. And it kind of just opens up the whole um, idea and the and the, you know, where everything all came from. So I can read that right now if okay. you want. Yeah, go. Okay. Sometimes things happen when you haven't slept. You've sucked back two cans of Kong Strong energy drinks. You can't remember the last time you were in bed. You're trying to have thoughts that don't tangle up. You've got a rolling brain stew. You get stuck on something stupid from a conversation with a friend about special hats people should wear, about creating something revolutionary, important, gripping. But all you can think of is some silly shit about a potato writing an igniting text for every potato everywhere, uniting them under a purpose, an uprising, a declaration of war. You've never had that happen? Is it really just me? Fuck it, I'm doing it. Here comes a manifesto. I'll write it to someone on the street. That was very well read. Was it? Yeah. Thank you. So with the other three poems in here, like, what is the, like, not so much what they're about, but, like, what's the journey with the, how the rest of the book ends up? The journey is just through my doubts and my anxieties and, you know, trying to deliver a manifesto to a stranger and <clears throat> how that affected me. And, yeah, and a lot about how I felt after, you know, with the with the horrible shame of being seen as the potato lady <laughs> walking about town. <laughs> Did you feel a lot of shame? Like, was there, like, a lot of, like, shit you had to work through because of it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought, oh, fuck. Like, I live in a tiny town, and I read this to this woman, this young woman, and everybody is going to know what I've done. And... <laughs> I just can't leave the house because I'm the potato lady forever, you know? Well, that's not good. Did you, like, did you just, like, stay inside for days? <laughs> yes. So how did, how did you break this um, potato lady curse? It was the writing, I think. And just um, having the whole class and being able to feel positive about it and... That really helped. So now you could go outside and you don't feel like that? Nope, I'm just a potato lady now, and I'm okay. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> well, you could, like, do another manifesto about, um, I don't know, like, strippers or women scientists, and then go do that, and then everyone will go, ooh, she's very knowledgeable. Look. And all this stuff. You just gotta, you gotta sell them something else there. I will do that. Yeah. I will be the stripper lady. The stripper scientist lady. Yeah. That sounds wonderful. There you go. That's really easy. We just, we just solved all your problems in like two seconds. <laughs> Everything's fine now. Well, I just wanted to say that um, because of the title, you know, Potato Manifesto, you may think you're getting something really silly, and you are, but I hope that the emotion comes across. That totally, like, makes a lot of sense, though, because, like, people will, like, think of this as a silly thing, and I think how real and raw you are is going to be the thing that when people read this, they're like, oh, my God, like, this is more than um, a little comedy bit, you know? Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I just hope that everything that was visceral about it um, is something that, you know, sticks with people and not just potatoes. Definitely want fries right now, though. <laughs> like, not, you need not fries. gonna lie. Not gonna lie. As far as, like, the poetry that's in Monsters in the Mouth compared to this, how would you describe the difference of that? 
I want people to know kind of where I go with my work. I don't want anyone, you know, if someone picks up the potato manifesto and and then maybe decides to read uh, Monsters in the Mouth, you know, with all of my um, very sexual writing and things that can be kind of confronting for people. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know if I want to just hit them over the head with that, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but you know what's weird, though? When you read this, your voice is so true that, like, reading this and then going to that, like, sounds like you're having a conversation with the same person. It's not so okay. jarring that it's like, what the fuck is this, you know? Like, you sound okay. like you in both of those pieces. Yeah, I hope everyone that, you know, ends up with the chapbook really enjoys it and may look for my other work, like my ebook, Monsters in the Mouth. But I do want people to know that a lot of my work is uh, exploring a lot of darker themes and a lot of it is very sexual and um, can be confronting for some people. But I do hope that people will see my voice and, and it won't be so jarring. What are, what are your future plans? What's next? What, what are you doing? My future plans are I really hope to release another chapbook or to um, do submissions to magazines. I think that'd be really interesting to see how my work would go over, you know, with other people. And I have like 500 more poems, so they kind of want out there. And I'd really love to be able to do that. Do you have an idea for the next chapbook you want to do? Yeah, I want to do something with um, some of my more recent poems because I feel like I've grown a lot as a writer, even since I did Monsters in the Mouth. Um, I think that, I don't know, it sounds kind of shitty to say that my things are a lot more powerful now, in my opinion, but um, that's kind of where I feel or what I feel about it. Yeah, no, I, I go through the same thing. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No, thanks for taking the time to do this. That's pretty much the end of the interview I did with Bunny. Remember, Potato Manifesto is out today. Bunny Wild. Um, there's only 25 copies of these. Only five of them are signed. And um, so I checked since I've been editing this video and... Um, already sold a few of them and while supplies last there are uh, potato manifesto bookmarks that will go with the orders so when those are gone those are gone I don't know exactly how many I have I'm just putting them in envelopes so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions um, for Bunny probably you could leave them in the comments of this and I'm sure Bunny will answer them okay so I hope you enjoyed this and um, pick up Potato Manifesto and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.